Hello everyone, welcome back to Isaac Games. I'm Isaac, here with another ARC tutorial video, and today we're going to cover something I think a lot of newer players overlook for the excitement of taming like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, uh, and that's farming. Farming is an integral part of ARC uh, in the beginning and towards the end. It's the boring part, but I'm here to teach you how it works and how you can make it easier so that you can get your crops and your resources to make kibbles and everything else and whatnot. Uh, so let's just jump right into it here. Uh, the first thing you're going to need to know is what you're planting your crops in, and easy enough, it's called a crop plot. Uh, and there are three different crop plots, right? You got a small, a medium, and a large. Uh, the only differences between them is that uh, they're basically water containers. You'll notice that this says uh, water, uh, 600 out of 600. It's irrigated, right? So that means it has water in it. Uh, and this can hold 600 units of water, medium 400, and small 200. So they'll stay watered for a longer period of time the bigger the crop plot is. The other major difference uh, between these three different crop plots is the crops that you can plant within them. The smallest one can only hold berries, and I have examples of those here, right? Uh, all your different kinds of berries, from mayho to stimberry, all of them, That's the, those are the only things that you can plant in the small crop plot. In the medium crop plot, along with being able to plant all of the berries, you can also plant uh, your farming uh, crops. The citronol, the rock carrots, the long grass, and the saver roots. Uh, and again, you can also plant the berries within this crop plot. And the large crop plot, along with both of the two previous things that we have mentioned, you are able to hold the plant species X, the plant species Z, and the plant species Y. Uh, and I'll go over those in a separate video because um, they deserve their own time, their own thing to explain what they do uh, and what they can do. So uh, this for just this video, I'm going to tell you that these crops can only be planted in the large crop plot. Uh, so those are the major differences between the three crop plots. Uh, you'll notice that uh, it says not fertilized and not seeded. That's because I haven't planted anything, nor have I put anything to fertilize uh, the crop plot. The three main things you need to grow a crop is going to be water, fertilizer, and, um, of course, the greenhouse effect. Uh, but we'll go over all three of those things here in a minute. I want to show you guys something that not a lot of newer players know, which is that you can stack crop plots. Uh, and that works for small, medium, or large. If you want to stack in your base them like this, just right over top of each other, it does not matter. It doesn't affect your plants. Um, it doesn't affect your fertilizer. It doesn't affect your greenhouse effect uh, or any of that sort of stuff So if you want to you know stack this one to a hundred high feel free and do that However, you want to manage your greenhouse however you want to manage your farm. That's up to you I just thought that I'd show if you're like hiding in a little rat cave on a server uh, And you need to grow crops you can put these shove them in a corner and still have like, you know 40 uh, crop plots without taking up too much space like instead of putting them uh, one per foundation like I did here uh, So I just thought I'd give you that little tip. So let's go over fertilizer, right? For your crop to grow and to live you're gonna need to fertilize your uh, Your crop plot so that it has something to eat, you know, just like uh, Real life it needs the nutrients and there's a couple different ways to get fertilizer uh, the main way is by poop the feces that all of your dinos will produce there's several different types of poop and by types i mean size right so small dinos are going to produce tiny poop and then large dinos are going to uh, produce large poop and every size in between um so basically poop can act as a fertilizer uh there's things called fertilizer units so a large poop i think is a thousand fertilizer units uh but you want to make this poop and turn it into actual fertilizer like the actual engram uh in the game so either re-fertilizer uh like this or actual fertilizer and i'll show you how to produce those pretty quickly uh so two main animals that i always recommend if you're farming especially beginning out is a pheomia the the big fat thing that you see here and a dung beetle Let's go over the two uses of these dinos real quick. The Pheomia, as you noticed, I named it Poop Factory because that's all it is to me. It generates poop that I then can uh, convert into fertilizer. Uh, and a quick way to generate poop, you'll see they actually create feces quite quickly. Uh, but if you need a ton of feces really fast, all you have to do is access the inventory of this buddy here, give it a bunch of stimberries, 
and prepare your third grader minds, my friends, because when you force feed this thing stim berries, it's going to produce just massive. Fine, you want more food? Eat more food. It's going to produce a massive amount of feces. You see that behind my inventory? It's already just producing a ridiculous amount of poop. Uh, and that's funny. So the only thing you're going to want to level on this thing is food so that you can force feed it more and more. And you'll see that I just have this. <laughs> it's basically a cannon of poop. Uh, yeah, so now you have plenty of uh, medium animal feces here to use uh, to convert into <laughs> fertilizer. So that's why it's useful to keep one of these guys around. Um, next, we'll talk about the compost bin uh, before we get into the dung beetle because this if you don't have a dung beetle, is what you're going to be using to create fertilizer. Uh, and basically, all you need is 50 thatch. I have 80 in here, but you only need 50 thatch and one feces of any kind, right? So you got small, uh, medium, large feces, uh, and you also have human feces, which counts as a different type. So those are the um, basically uh, your main feces, right? Um, and you're gonna put that in here in the compost and then you're just gonna let it sit for a while in game and eventually uh, 50 thatch will be consumed uh, and some feces will be consumed and you'll get fertilizer. The other way that you can create fertilizer which is much much faster and uh, much more reliable is to grab yourself a couple of dung beetles and the only thing you're ever gonna level up on these dung beetles is their weight so that they can hold more feces. Dung beetles love uh, to hold feces so what you're gonna do is transfer as much feces as you can onto your dung beetle here uh, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it in an enclosed area a one by one square works whatever uh, and enable wandering so if I enable wandering here uh, it won't be able to go very far because I've encumbered it uh, but after a short period of time it will convert medium feces into fertilizer you don't need thatch or anything else uh, and just a little hint, if you have several different kinds of feces on him, uh, they all have separate timers, right? So medium feces, let's just give an example here. Like small feces, it will take, let's say, uh, 10 minutes for the dung beetle to produce uh, one fertilizer. Uh, and that's one timer, right? Medium feces is going to take 15 minutes to produce one fertilizer. Large, 20, and human feces, 25. I, those aren't the real numbers, but just to keep it simple here, right? Uh, each one of those timers starts individually. So if you have one of each kind, each timer is going at the same time. If you just have a bunch of medium feces, it's only going to produce one fertilizer at a time with one feces. So you want to make sure that you're keeping, you know, medium, large, human, uh, and small feces all on it so it can produce faster. Or you could do what I do and just grab like 10 of these things, throw them into a little pit, and just make sure that they constantly have feces on them and you will have plenty of fertilizer. Uh, so those are the two most useful dinos, and if you don't have a dung beetle, you also can, you know, make like 40 compost bins uh, and have that going. So that's pretty much the main thing of everything. Uh, if you want to know the difference in seeds, so basically you have uh, five different stages of seeds. Uh, when you first plant it, all you have to do is take the berry or take the seed uh, that you want, uh, access the inventory of the crop plot and go ahead and uh, transfer it over it's only going to transfer one you only need one seed uh, and now you'll see that it says seeded if it had fertilizer it would automatically start growing uh, and a, a when you plant a crop it has five stages uh, seeded which takes about a minute it will enter into stage two which is seedling and that takes uh, a minute to about seven in-game days sometimes a full real life day uh, a midling which takes about five in-game days a growthling uh, one to two in game, uh, one to two in game days, and then a fruitling, which is the final stage where we'll start bearing uh, the fruit. So a mayho berry seed will obviously start bearing mayho berries, right? And it will stay in that stage uh, pretty much indefinitely unless it doesn't have access to water or your fertilizer runs out. So you want to make sure that you're continuously fertilizing uh, your crops. Um, and then finally, the greenhouse effect will. If you can get up to the maximum 300% greenhouse effect, those stages are drastically shortened. Uh, I'm not sure exactly by how much, but I mean, 
you're gonna get a seedling within a couple in game day, or you're gonna get a fruitling within a couple in game days instead of having to wait like the I don't know 15 or so in game days that you would normally have to wait. If you want to learn how to irrigate your crops, like how irrigation works, I have a video on that. Go ahead and check it out. And if you want to learn how to get the 300% greenhouse effect, I have a separate video on that as well. Uh, go ahead and click on the I cards that I provided or go to my channel. Uh, and then you guys will know everything that you need to know to grow your crop successfully and quickly and uh, use it to make kibble. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it answered a lot of your questions. If I wasn't clear on anything or you have more questions that you want answered, go ahead and leave uh, comments down below. And anything else you want me to cover, again, comment that and I will get to it as quick as I can. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next ARC tutorial video. Have a great day.